So the next two videos, we're going to address this continuous improvement process, um, including the steps we can take in a continuous improving project and also the tools that can be used to assist in that process. So there's two different types of improvements. The first one is incremental and the second is breakthrough. Now with the incremental improvements, these are very small changes um, either to the process or how we do something that allows us to be a little bit more efficient with, the, with our time. Um, perfect example, when I've been on uh, concert tours with the choir I sing with, a couple of different times and um, rather than all 90 of us going to the front desk to check in um, the keys are pre pre done and the rooms are pre assigned and the one person goes in our tour manager goes in gets all the keys comes out to the bus and hands out the keys accordingly um, that definitely speeds up the check-in process for us as the group, but it also does not clog up the front desk for the regular guest staying at the hotel and trying to check in. Um, for the restaurants, we might um, take a look at and see how our floor is designed in the front of the house, and we might tweak the sections that maybe make a little bit more sense. And so that would allow um, servers to not get confused as to where their sections are um, <clears throat> excuse me and so that those are kind of examples of incremental very small now with the breakthrough improvements those are a completely redesigned work process um, the book gives a perfect example of housekeeping in a hotel and so rather than the ritz carlton um, rather than just utilizing one housekeeper to clean a room they use three housekeepers and so, you know, each person is focused on this, the same thing in each room. And so by doing that task repetitively, they get very good at it. They get very quick at it. Um, you know, each housekeeper could clean 39 rooms per, uh, per shift. But um, now by combining these three people to clean one guest room, now the productivity goes to 45 rooms per shift and so it increased their productivity um, there may be a way maybe like um, if you're on the line in the back of the house in a restaurant um, there might be a way that you could creatively combine work processes between the grill the fry um, cook and so that way you had two people doing the same thing um, might be able to increase productivity and shorten ticket time. So really it's kind of just thinking outside the box and being creative. We're going to talk about some of the tools in the next. The steps within, um, within the continuous improvement process. So first we need to look for um, an opportunity for improvement and as far as keeping track of data we can do that internally with our own reports um, we can also do that externally with through our guests through um, customer surveys through following complaints um, and so all of these ways are are ways for us to keep track of the data and that data is going to be really important because in the future of this continuous improvement process it's going to help us really which is the area that we need the most work on um, the problem statements the the continuous improvement process starts with a really well written problem statement and oftentimes when we're looking at problem statements um, the statement actually looks at the um, result of the problem or a symptom of the problem instead of the problem itself um, and so you know the book gives a great example of um, worn and tattered hand towels in the guest room and so yes that is a problem but what is the overlying problem what is the big picture problem and the result was the budget was not there um, to 
to have a, a the appropriate amount of towels in there. So the towels are getting washed more frequently and they're getting tattered and not replaced. Um, as you're developing this, the selection criteria, we need to figure out what is important to the guest, what is the importance to management, and what is the importance to the staff. So those are three different key players that we need to um, identify as far as is it really important for um, our guests, is it more important for our staff, is it more important to our management, um, and identifying which one is the, is the biggest criteria and the most importance at that time is going to help you identify how you address this particular issue. Um, and then ultimately you're going to select which area that we're When it comes to um, analyzing that area that we're going to target for improvement, um, the first thing we need to do is to establish our baseline measurements. We've talked about that in a previous chapter. Now, remember those baseline measurements is where we are today. Okay, that's where that's what we're trying to improve on. Um, and that's going to help us in the end when we evaluate our progress. Did we achieve our goal or did we not achieve our goal? Um, and remember where our goal is and where our baseline is, that gap between the two points is our gap analysis. So that's what we're going to now um, analyze in order to determine how we're going to improve to get to our goal. Um, so we really need to look closely at the process um, and what is going on from the point of service, from the point of production, so we can uh, be really sure that we are looking at all potential possibilities for improvement. So once we've identified that potential cause, then we look at that, determine that root cause, and that's going to help us write that problem statement. Now, as we develop and implement our improvements, um, the more critical we are during that analysis, that process analysis phase, um, the easier it's going to, for us to be to identify potential solutions. Um, and through a variety of different tools, which we'll talk about in the next video, um, we'll be able to select what the best solution is. When we conduct that trial test, kind of a practice run, um, then from there, we can take lessons learned, we can improve the process, and then we can actually then create our action plan to put the whole improvement process into action. Um, you know, so I, I've used this example about Hard Rock Cafe. San Antonio Hard Rock Cafe is one of the test kitchens. And so here, they will test a recipe, they will test a menu item and they'll get feedback from the guest what was great about it what was not so great about it um, what was the process of making that how did it integrate into the process that's already established and how did it integrate into the current menu and then from there they take all that data um, all that information before they actually roll it out to all of the um, cafes. If it doesn't work, well then now I've tested it in one small location, one small department, um, rather than an entire company wide and, and it fails and then all that money for marketing, all that money wasted on product development um, was, would be just wasted. So at the very end of the process, we do um, an evaluation of where we stand. So for example, here's our graph, okay? Our baseline measurement is here, and our projected goal is up here. We want to get up to this level. So now, during the process, we take a variety of different assessments and we notice that we are kind of, you know, we're going up, we're getting close to it, and then all of a sudden our sales start dropping and we come out a little bit closer. And at the end, did we meet our goal? Well, no, we did not meet our goal, but initially our gap analysis was pretty big from here to here. But now 
after the continuous improvement process, our gap analysis is much shorter. So we didn't quite meet our goal, but we achieved probably two thirds of our goal. And now we just need to figure out, okay, back to that planning phase, back to the drawing board. What do we need to do now to close this gap even further? Um, and so just because we don't meet our goal doesn't necessarily mean that we are complete um, failures. It just means that we achieved part of our goal and now we need to work a little bit harder and we need to identify ways to close that gap. And then now at this point, it's a much smaller gap than it was before. So in the next video, we're going to talk about the different tools that are available to us to help us throughout this process.